Hi, I'm Mike Becker with PIA. I'm joined today by five independent agents from around the country, not just any independent agents. These are five from the PIA national leadership. Uh, we're working as we are every single day to uh, stay in front of this COVID-19 outbreak in terms of identifying all the challenges that many of you are faced with every single day. And uh, more importantly, putting solutions forward to uh, help you uh, take on those challenges that you're faced with. So uh, five agents, Dennis Kunke, our national president is up in Wisconsin. We have Wayne White down in Arkansas, Tony Curtis in Michigan, Gerald Hemphill in Virginia, and Keith Savino in New Jersey. Guys, if you could just tell a little bit about your agency just for a minute here. Dennis, we'll start with you. Absolutely. Uh, I'm Dennis Kunke. I'm your current president. Uh, I'm with Roberts and Ryan Insurance in Milwaukee. We are a, a multi-state operation, however, with about $350 million of premium, quite large. And of course, being in different states to make this regulatory issues kind of important for, for us across the board. So uh, I'm a vice president, as is everybody that works there, just like a bank, I'm afraid. So, uh, but uh, we look forward to talking with you today. Mike? Thank you, Dennis. Uh, Wayne's down in Arkansas, Wayne. Sure, thanks, Mike. Uh, I'm Wayne White. Uh, I am the incoming PIA national president, and I represent the Arkansas Affiliate Agency, uh, as well as doing uh, significant work with a number of carriers, uh, advising them uh, as to the agency side of the business. Thank you, Wayne. Wayne's got a great background because not only does he have significant experience on the independent agent channel, but also through his career on the carrier side. So as we talk about uh, the this COVID-19 outbreak and how it's affecting agencies, but also carriers. Uh, Wayne's been particularly helpful and insightful, so we appreciate you joining us today, Wayne. Uh, Tony Curdy is up in Michigan. Tony. Hi, Mike. Good morning, all. Mike, I'm with Acrisure, a large international agency with hundreds of partners uh, across the U.S., Europe, Canada, and I'm on the operations side. It's certainly a challenge uh, in what we're dealing with. Further, um, as a PIA national treasurer, um, we are also looking at different challenges our membership has and uh, certainly uh, trying to support uh, everyone's needs. Uh, and finally, um, I've been active with the Michigan PIA uh, board member, uh, past president, and uh, working locally with, uh, with our board to try and help our partners with their challenges. Thanks, Great. Mike. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. Uh, we'll go down to Virginia. Uh, Gerald Hemphill. Thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you, Mike. I'm Gerald Hemphill of GFH Insurance. We're located in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, we service mostly Virginia and the mid-Atlantic states. Uh, we are a retail agency and uh, we writing and selling insurance every day. And so this has impacted us in, in various ways. I'm currently the Secretary Assistant Treasurer for PI National. Thank you. Thank you, Gerald. And uh, to our past national president, uh, Keith Savino in New Jersey. Keith. Hi, I'm Keith Savino. I'm uh, the, one of the principals of Broadfield Insurance, which is a member of PCF Insurance Services. I am the uh, immediate past president of PIA National and happy to be on the call today. Thank you, Keith. Uh, five agents, incredibly diverse backgrounds, all in the independent agent size, but from uh, you know, family agencies to large national agencies with, with hundreds of partners across the country, uh, carrier background as well. So a great group of guys to talk with today. And Gerald, I'm gonna start with you. Sure. Family agency down in Richmond, Virginia. Tell us what's been going on. We know that agents have already transitioned overwhelmingly to past couple of weeks to working from home, trying to figure out uh, the remote work scenario, but now they're looking at their agencies and what how is their agency being impacted by the ongoing outbreak restrictions guidelines could you shed a little light on that well sure we we definitely have seen a financial impact uh our our clients obviously have started to uh become worried about their uh, their finances restaurants daycares uh food trucks any service industry that services those industries have been impacted and of course that's impacted us and so uh, obviously the business income, a lot, of, a lot of misinformation out there in terms of uh, what's covered, what's not, why, uh, our ability to communicate directly with our clients to explain uh, what policy forms are, uh, what's covered, and unfortunately what's not. And uh, we are definitely seeing an impact in that, that way. 
and uh, and then of course uh, trying ourselves as an agency to figure out what resources do we have uh, to move forward financially with our staff uh, working remotely uh, just the logistics of running an agency every day those are all what keeps us up at night and and uh, and looking for for answers right so you just hit a, a number of things that are impacting agencies across the country and there, there's one that we're seeing and we're hearing about more and more and has the potential to, to grow exponentially and and that's impacting cash flow to the agency and there's a variety of reasons that we see that's being impacted we're hearing more and more that there's just not as much new business being written there's these uh, billing conferences and, and delays being uh, extended by both the carrier and some regulators out there. Keith, could you talk to us a little bit about the impacts of agency cash flow and some of the, the downstream effects of that? Yeah, Mike, you know, probably a month ago, I would see agents speaking about the fact that thankfully, you know, we're able to continue supporting our clients because we're in an industry, a service industry that may not be as impacted as, for example, some of the other direct retail establishments. And I cautioned a lot of the agents at the time, and I feel the same way now. We serve an important role. We're always excluded from the lists of the uh, businesses that are you know, required to close or required to stay open and available for our clients because we're part of the financial services industry. And being able to have our staff um, continue to work for us and be there to support our clients is what all of us as insurance agents want to be able to do so that we're available to help them for all their questions during these very horrible times for so many clients. Problem is when you have changes to payment plans, pausing payments, billing options, et cetera, then there will be impacts to those uh, firms. And as a result, it, there'll be client impact as well. It may lead to, again, reduction of workforce. It could lead to a number of things. Um, it would be great to say that most agencies sit there and run with this great capital reserve in place, but frankly, I just don't think that's the place, right? Particularly since so many agencies around the country are smaller agencies that are so important to their town and to their clients. You have the addition of the regulatory actions, which you just mentioned. Um, now, the PIA site provides updates for members on this all the time, but you know, just recently, the other day, uh, New York is requiring agents to contact their clients electronically, and if you can't do it electronically, by mail. Um, now, we have already been proactively for weeks reaching out to our clients. Uh, we have a great CRM system, and we're pushing out emails, our, our account execs you know, have lists and they're calling clients, we're having these conversations. But there are gonna be some clients, perhaps you know, they never wanted to be contacted by email. You may not have their cell phone. So you gotta figure out how to put something in the mail to them. And that's a challenge because many of those clients may not even wanna open their mail without spraying it with disinfectant. So you've got all these interesting dynamics that are going on and it's mostly to let folks know that if they do have hardship and they do want to put a pause on their payments that they can. Um, the other impact that's going to be for agencies, frankly, is, is clients who either don't open their doors or clients who have a change in exposure. Commercial lines are personal lines, employee benefits. There's lots of lines of business that will be affected by this, but it may just be, it may be a, a change in sales estimates, a change in payroll estimates, Many of our carriers are being uh, really helpful with this right now, and they're allowing us to put some of those changes in effect as opposed to somebody having to cancel their insurance completely. So those are probably some of the big ones that, that, um, that are up there. But I think it all leads back to, again, the agent really sits in a consumer advocacy role. Right now, what we're doing mostly, to your point, Mike, is you know, it's not like people are selling their homes. You don't have life-changing events. You don't have the new car being picked up every day at the dealer. You know, there are, isn't a lot of that going on. So we've really shifted very much in a crisis to a consumer advocacy and communication role where we're helping our clients to keep their doors open. And that includes, like in our case, in our agency, we have a really um, uh, robust COVID page, you know, at broadfieldinsurance.com. And we have all sorts of resources. So what we want to do for our clients has passed that along. Thankfully, PIA has provided, and we have a whole section on our site where we take the PIA material as, as, uh, as Gerald has, and we're passing it along to our agents as well. And that's been such a great help for our clients. That's great perspective, Keith. Thank you. And, and I want to circle back on two things that you mentioned. Um, one is you mentioned the new requirement in New York. So if you're a New York agent and you've heard about this new requirement, this required communication to insured the PIA New York affiliate, which is part of the PIA 
Northeast region um, has a print and mail service to help you with that. So make sure you're checking in with PA New York if you are a New York agent. Uh, but also, as Keith also mentioned, it's already our plan, a, Mike. There you go. There you go. We're uh, on there's a there's a variety of other PI uh, resources available, not only at the national level where we are, but also at the affiliate level, state and regional affiliates across the country. So uh, we're out there trying to put out as much information uh, to you as possible to make this um, as minimal of a burden as possible to make your job and your life a little bit easier. But the reality is, Keith, you talked about a number of impacts, right? We're talking about agency cash flow and keeping up with the regulatory actions and carrier actions. And this affects all agencies, but arguably different. Now, Dennis, you're part of Robertson Ryan, one of the biggest agencies uh, in Wisconsin. And tell us how it's affecting you and what are you seeing and, and what are you doing about it? Well, we're, we have all the same problems you have anywhere else in the country, of course, and uh, maybe on a larger scale because we do have multi-state operations, but uh, everyone's working from home. Nobody's liking it, to be very honest with you, especially me. I'm, you know, I'm a sales guy, as the rest of us are. We love to see people and we're not seeing anybody. Uh, but we're kind of looking at this maybe on the bright side from a renewal insurance standpoint basis in that if our customers are so busy trying to figure out how to get money from the federal government, they're not taking calls from uh, the Smith agency saying, we'd like to quote your business. So uh, there, there may be some good that will come of this somewhere down the road. Uh, from not losing business based on being shopped. Um, but that's about, that's about it, I'm afraid. There's not much else going on that's that well. That's that good. So, so um, Dennis, can I ask you about the, the cash flow specifically? Now, whether you pay, you know, heavier commission, less of a base salary, commercial lines, personal lines, you know, what are, what are your thoughts on how the different lines of insurance may respond to or correlate to the reduction in cash flow? Well, the, the commercial lines is going to be getting clobbered right now because we have a heavy restaurant book of business and uh, they're just not open. So, of course, we're currently doing the same thing that Gerald's doing. We're reducing payrolls. We're reducing sales. And we're doing it right now. Uh, so it's going to be affecting us this next quarter. Uh, we expect and predict that we'll be somewhere between 15 to 20 percent down in revenue compared to our budgets. Uh, and I don't think we're going to be far off with that. From a personal line standpoint, as long as the customer pays their bill, we're going to get paid. If, however, they take a 60-day uh, hiatus uh, that the companies are giving them, we're, we're not going to get commission for that period. So it's all backed up by at least two months, I would say. So um, our agency is going to be able to get through it. We have a pretty good cash situation, uh, and, and I hope most do, uh, but you never know. Right. And what you referenced, the, the 60 day for, like, delays, for example, we're, we're starting now to see carriers start to come out. We'll circle back to that in a minute of, with, uh, you know, accelerated commission programs, that sort of thing. But Tony, you mentioned, uh, told everyone you're with Acrisure, you have hundreds of agency partners across the country. Uh, for an organization like yours, how are you dealing with this and what are you seeing? Yeah, Mike, Mike thank you. Um, I work predominantly on the operations side. And keeping our business running is paramount, uh, both to serve our clients and, and support our employees. These are very critical um, ingredients to, to any agency's success. And there's really three areas that um, I've been taking a closer look at. And I think these three areas will resonate with any agency of any size. Uh, the first, uh, the first uh, thought is leadership. And our leadership has done a great job of communicating to our partners, our employees, by video, written messages, posting on internal sites. And that also should include clients and carrier partners. Uh, communicating with this group, uh, these groups are super important and critical to long-term success. Uh, the cash flow topic was mentioned earlier by my colleagues. And our treasury and finance group has assisted our partners to um, ramp up uh, different types of banking services, remote deposits, increase use of ACH and other uh, methods of moving funds around. Um, super critical, very valuable. Um, and, and finally, um, leveraging technology, I think has been a very important component 
to this exercise compared to in the past. Y2K was a, a scary time and there's been other challenges, blackouts of power in the Midwest back in I think 2003. Um, these are all challenges and today with technology, um, our IT group has really um, ramped up their efforts uh, to support uh, people from working from home. Uh, in one weekend, uh, we had thousands of employees shift from uh, office setting mm -hmm. to uh, work at home settings. A uh, couple other thoughts, again, for our um, members to, to give some serious thought to is security on the IT side. I'm not an IT expert like some of my colleagues here on this uh, video, but uh, an increased awareness of wire fraud, um, phishing, different types of security challenges when you have people working remotely um, is certainly a different challenge than when you have a real tight network um, from an office standpoint. So um, these are some things that I'm seeing, uh, a lot of challenges in how we operate. Some folks have embraced it and have settled in. Others continue to struggle with different challenges. Mm -hmm. So uh, staying positive and being optimistic, I think, is, is really important uh, as, a, as an agency, as a group, as an industry. Great. Thanks, Ted. I want to talk about some of the, the industry response to some of these issues that we're hearing about. Um, you know, one question we get is we're hearing just more and more about the, the billing delays, the 60 day delays. Some of that's coming from the carrier side. Some are actually required by the regulator side, but there's unknowns. If, if an insurer takes, for example, that 60 day delay and they ultimately do not pay that premium with the effective date of that cancellation, if it is delayed, uh, when or if or how is that is that commission getting paid to the producer uh, or the agency and we're starting that was um, a very quick reaction by some within the industry to implement these sorts of things a week ago plus but now we're starting to see some of these questions get answered um, and carriers are coming out more and more with with further guidance on this Wayne could you talk to that a little bit sure it's what we're now seeing uh, on the insurance industry side is the things that in our own local communities we've been concerned with uh, as we see the restaurants and uh, the other businesses that have been required to close uh, or restrict their operations. So they're suffering revenue losses. Uh, we are beginning to see and certainly have acknowledged before now uh, revenue, potential revenue losses on the agency side uh, based on the things that you mentioned, Mike, where uh, the various states, uh, from a regulatory standpoint, have taken actions to allow for um, time for, for insureds that can pay their premiums late. Uh, they're allowing 60-day grace periods in many cases. Uh, it varies from state to state as to the restrictions on those things, but carriers have also acknowledged that in order to keep their agency partners in business, uh, they have to address the cash flow issue as well. And many of them uh, are looking for ways to do that. One of the ways is to possibly advance, and, and a couple of companies have done this already, uh, set a program in place to advance year-end, uh, what normally would be year-end bonus or incentive plan payments uh, to advance pay some of that, maybe as much as 25% early on uh, in this year, so that you receive something in the first quarter that you may not receive otherwise until late or early next year, probably. So certainly the carriers are aware of the challenges here on the cash flow side. Um, they're trying their best to address this uh, as an agent. Uh, you probably should contact your marketing rep because information on those programs will come to you uh, via your field reps uh, from the various carriers. Great. Thank you, Wayne. And, and it is great that we're seeing more and more carriers step up and provide not only guidance and just answers to some of the questions that, that so many have been asking the past couple of days and weeks now, but uh, real solutions, which is what, as an organization, we're after here. Uh, Gerald, I want to ask you a little bit more about other carrier actions or questions that, that you've been seeing yourself, but also hearing from other agents? Yeah, sure. I, I think uh, a number of questions that we have uh, really have to do with, uh, with audits, 
Uh, the willingness, of course, we've seen many of the carriers respond to a 60-day grace, uh, but they haven't necessarily uh, answered the question of what about uh, forgiveness of that premium, uh, you know, cancellations, uh, what if it goes beyond? Many of them have uh, used a May 15th date. Uh, this could very easily go beyond that. How are they responding to that? And then uh, what about our surplus carrier friends and colleagues that may not be tied to the, uh, the state regulation as far as uh, cancellations, that sort of thing. So those are some of the questions that are, that are uh, coming forward that uh, as agents, and I know we're doing the best we can to communicate with those underwriters and asking those questions, but that's part of uh, what we're, we're feeling on the agency side. Great. And you mentioned uh, also a little bit, you know, the, where the relief is coming from the regulatory side, Dennis, uh, you've seen that in, in Wisconsin as well, and it's not necessarily consistent everywhere, but you've seen the carrier or the regulator step up a little bit. Yeah, we're absolutely delighted in Wisconsin that the Wisconsin Workers Compensation Bureau uh, came out with a new code for the furloughed payroll. Uh, what we mean by this is, of course, if we have clients that are paying their people, uh, and let's say they're... Um, roofers. It's a very, very high rate. They're paying these people, but they will not be charged at audit for that payroll at that code. It will be a separate code and there will be no charge for it, uh, but it must be separately taken care of and reported. Uh, but we're delighted that they took this uh, in advance of us having to beg or ask, or, uh, but, but it's stuff we should, this is the kind of things we should be looking at for as a PIA group, I think. You're right, and that's that's a great point, and that's exactly some of the things that we are pursuing. Uh, Dennis mentioned this is his experience in Wisconsin, but one of the things as an organization that we would like to see and we're promoting and advocating for is greater consistency across the country, whether it's individual state actions or uh, federal guidelines that pr provide greater consistency to some of the uh, restrictions that are in place right now or other uh, parameters that are uh, in place within the industry right now. So consistency would be great. So many agencies are operating in multi-state uh, jurisdictions right now. And, and really as an organization, that's what we're after is to not only identify the issues for you, but to find the solutions for you. So you can focus on what you do best, which is working with those insureds on a daily basis. Uh, we've been promoting business recovery proposals at the federal level to provide relief to businesses without um, overarching burdens on the industry. It's a win, win, win for all of us in this country as we try and recover from this COVID-19 outbreak as an organization, whether it's the national or that your state, uh, local regional affiliates are putting out a variety of education, webinars, uh, advocacy initiatives and proposals. Uh, so make sure you're checking out our website, uh, the national one, PIANet.com slash coronavirus. We're housing an array of resources for you, but also your PIA affiliate website. Um, our social media pages, we have put out member guides on the CARES Act member guides on the Families First Act, step-by-step uh, -step, you know, guidance on how to uh, access the payroll protection program. Uh, so we wanna make sure that you are armed with the, the timeliest, most accurate, relevant information uh, that you can have right at your fingertips. Um, and not only help you, but help your insurance too. Gerald, you had mentioned earlier that you're, you're using this information that the organization is putting out to help your agency better communicate with your insurance. Correct. I, I found it was so much information coming out, so much misinformation I was seeing on social media that uh, PIA started supplying me with information, mainly for myself and my agency, but we were then in turn turning that around to our clients so that they could even understand what's the difference between the payroll protection and the SBA loan and where, how do I apply, where do I go. Well, that information has been invaluable to me. And Keith, you're part of a large uh, operation, West Coast, East Coast, and, and you're doing similar, trying to get the best information out. And not, not, not only are you communicating with your insurance, but you're someone that's been so committed to the organization and so involved. So you, you really have two different perspectives, the agent on the street, but also the national perspective here doing the same approach. Right, Mike. So, you know, I don't want to say fortunately for us, but, you know, we have a lot of offices in California as well as other parts of the country. And as a result, these are areas of the country that have been hit hard and fast. And a lot of the learning that the industry has had is by looking at these parts of the country. So um, there are other, you know, portions of the U.S. that will probably see these things coming their way. 
um, unfortunately. And so I would tell them to pay close attention to what the state insurance departments are doing, what the governors are doing, et cetera. Um, what we've done is taken the federal information. We put together national resources for our clientele. Um, I send it out to our clients. Heck, I send it out to anyone. You know, if I've got friends that happen to be somewhere else or doing something else, it's like, look, I hope this can help you. Um, over the weekend, we sent out a multi-page PowerPoint on this to all of our clients. Um, again, providing guidance to them. And I would encourage agencies that, like, we have the resources to do that, but we still rely upon PIA, right? There are agencies that don't have any resources to do that. They don't have someone who's going to write this stuff from beginning to end. And they really, really, really need to rely upon what PIA provides for them and hope to share it with everyone. Thank you, Keith. Yeah, these are, these are pretty heavy topics that we're talking about. We know that the cash flow issue is keeping a lot of agents up at night, not to mention keeping up with the regulatory guidances. And we want to make sure that you know that you have us as a resource, as an organization. You have agents just like the five on the call today, but um, entire staff around the country, not to mention uh, hordes of other agents that are part of the solutions. And we want to make sure that uh, you have the tools at your fingertips so that you can focus on your agency. So please be checking in with PIA and look for the information that we put out. And, and also let us know. What do you need? What are your questions? And how can we better assist you? We are here for you. And we appreciate your membership. We appreciate your involvement in this organization. And we definitely want to see um, you through what is a very challenging time. So uh, Dennis, Tony, Gerald, Keith, Wayne, thank you uh, for participating on this video today. And we hope to talk to you all very soon. And the rest of you, thank you for joining in. And we look forward to hearing from you in the very near future. Have a great day. Thank you.